Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to share with you whether it's worth it to invest $20,000 onto the Nikon Z9 and some of the other lenses such as the 402.8. So if you're thinking about upgrading to this one, by the end of this video, you have a much better idea. I'm going to share with you a few things I love about this camera and a few things that I'm not too sure about it. And make sure to stay until the end because I'm going to share with you something crazy that happened on this Z9. So this one afternoon in Tanzania, it suddenly started raining, really heavy downpour and the wind was blowing and we were in an open vehicle. But the encounter was so good, we saw so many lions. Before I can have time to put on the raincoat, I was already shooting. And after half an hour of insanely strong rain, the camera was working perfectly. Even without the rain cover, I really like it. Look at how clean it is right after I came back from Tanzania. That reminded me of a trip to Alaska two years ago. I was using the Sony A1 and it started to ring as well. I kept on getting these warning error messages on my Sony. We were at a perfect location with a bear dashing in the water with water splashing filling the frame. The bear was running for salmon but the angle looks like the bear was running towards me and in that particular moment the ring just got between the camera body of the a1 and the lens and then it fucked up the lens and the whole sequence was ruined and uh, that was one of the best encounter with bears because the background was golden at the time i was leading a tour and several students one was from just that sequence. I feel happy for my clients, but uh, oh God, I'm still, it still haunts me about the photos that I've missed. But with the Nikon, I'm much more confident in those extreme weather that it can perform. Oh, by the way, my name is Tin Man Lee. I quit my nine to five job as a bioengineer to uh, become a full-time wildlife photographer. And I have been very honored to be invited as a judge for Nature Photographer of the Year and Bird Photographer of the Year. So another thing that I like about the Nikon is the LCD because it can be flipped just like that. And also you can also do... Oh, yes. <laughs> It can also do this and that. As you can see, you can do this. If you want to go low angle and you want to go vertical, you can look from the top to here and then you can see what is going on. But for the Sony A1, it can only do, do this instead of the vertical. So you lost opportunities if you want to do vertical shots. So that is what I like about that. However, the Sony A7R5, um, can do this uh, vertical flip of the LCD. But still, talking about the flagship, the Z9, I think for the LCD is better than the A1. And the wake up time of the camera, so when you turn the camera on, it's a lot faster than the Sony A1. So imagine if you're driving and suddenly a super rare animal such as a Wolverine showing up and it, it disappears very quickly. But if the wake up time is uh, very quick, you'll be able to get the photo before the other camera. So the Sony is not as fast as the Z9. And the image quality, I can't really tell the difference between the Canon R5, which I have used for, for quite a long time, and the Sony A1 and the Z9. But I was pleasantly surprised by the image stabilization because at the point I was using 200 of a second with the 402.8 lens and the photo was sharp. So that was a really good thing. I think I have more consistent sharp photos in slow shutter speed to Sony. Sometimes when the photo opportunities is not like super good i would take slow motion video like the 4k 120 and uh, i don't like the sony a1 because the the tracking of the animal is not like full time like for example if you are using the canon r5 all you need is just to press on the animal and when the animal is moving and when you're taking a video you follow the track but the sony you can't and uh, i know you have to keep your thumb on the animal to keep tracking but for on Z9, again, all you need is just to select the animal. And as long as you keep the animal in the frame, you keep tracking and that absolutely amazing. In terms of the ISO, a Nikon Z9 can go to ISO 64, which is lower than Sony A1, which is ISO 100. And you may say this shouldn't make any difference. When I was in Tanzania, I was doing running of the wildebeest and it was in the afternoon, so they're pretty bright. 
And uh, in order to do like a 15 of a second shutter speed pan blur, I have to turn the F number to the largest, which is F22. And still, if I have the ISO 100, I would have blown out the bright part, the highlight of the photo. But when I can go to ISO 64, turn out perfect exposure. So that is actually quite important. The most important thing I like about the Z9 is actually not the camera, but the lens. So after a long wait, I finally received the 402.8 with the internal teleconverter so you can just flip this lever and then turn it from 402.8 to 600 f4 and this is uh, a game changer for me because in places like in Alaska or in uh, Kenya especially when it's dusty or when it's raining and or when the vehicle is moving changing the teleconverter could be inconvenient and also it takes time, but it takes a few seconds, which by the time you put it on, you may have already missed the shot. But here you just do this flip and it saves you a lot of the time. At first, be thinking like, oh, as long as you can change the teleconverter, put it on quickly, then it's fine. You don't really need to have this Nikon lens. However, what I didn't realize is when you put on the 1.4 and then you take a few photos and then you think okay maybe now i want to go back to 402.8 to play with some different composition and all you need to do is just to do that and then you say okay now i don't want it i don't want to change it back so by doing this like i don't think anybody can put in and put off the teleconverter that quick as if as i pull this lever so that really helps me to create a lot more photos on the fly with different composition with full frame close-up and everything like that so when I was in Alaska, a few times when I was using the 402.8, I wish I had a 600 f4 because sometimes the bears would move closer and move further away. And, and most of the time, 402.8 is good, but there are just a few photos. That I wish I had the 600. And when I bring the 600, then I wish that I have the 400 because uh, sometimes the bears can get pretty close. And I try to bring both big lenses to those places, but it is just very difficult to carry two big lenses together and especially if you go to places like Africa where the airplane has weight limit and becomes impossible to bring these two big lenses there. In terms of the things that I don't like about the Nikon, so number one you may laugh is it's just the weight. It's like a brick. It's a lot heavier than the Sony A1 and you may say that by including the vertical grip and the two batteries for Sony A1 then the weight is very similar. However, after using the vertical grip on my Sony A1 for for a while, I realized that I don't really need to use that because I rather have extra batteries in my pocket and save the weights because I handhold a lot for, for my photos. So if that's the case, then the Sony A1 really is a much better choice if weight is an issue. And if you are super serious about photography like me, <laughs> you might bring two camera bodies, each one attached to a different lens so that you don't need to waste time switching lenses. And if you're really less insane as me, sometimes I bring three camera bodies. So if you buy three Z9, it's gonna be much heavier than three A1s for, and the, the batteries. Even though I love it because I've never really used up one batteries in the whole day of photo shoot, but I would still prefer a, a much lighter A1 for this case. So the second thing I don't like about the Z9 is in Sony A1, there, there is a function called the Zebra. Meaning that when you're looking through the electronic viewfinder or looking through the LCD, if there is a overblown highlight, if there's a certain part of the photo that is too bright, where you lost all the details, there will be something shining like a zebra's marking on it to remind you that you overblown the highlights. But for Nikon Z9, it doesn't have that function, even though you can still see the histogram but I just love the zebra it gives me an instant feedback of control the zebra is really a game changer because when we were using the digital SLR in the last generation you always have to review the photos after you take it and check on the image to see if there are any blinkies the, the blown out highlights but with the zebra it solved that problem and unfortunately the z9 doesn't have that function so number four is the sony a1 has three dials one is in the front one is here and then the other one is on here there's the third dial but for the nikon it only have two dials 
And without the third dial, I have to switch back to auto ISO. And I hated it because as a professional, I just use manual all the time. And so I lose a lot of control without that. You may say that there is a dial on the lens where you can use it for the ISO, but when you are carrying a heavy lens, it's quite difficult to make this little control on the lens as that. So that is one thing that I really don't like about the Z9. And number five of what I don't like about it is the autofocus, eye tracking. Even though it's pretty good, but the Sony A1 is a lot faster. So for example, if I'm tracking the animal with the Z9 and if the animal or the bird has some sudden movement, like jumping, some of those things, unexpected movement. For some reason, I still miss the shot, but it doesn't happen with the Sony A1. Fortunately, right now I'm focusing a lot on bears and on African wildlife and they are not like super quick. So that I can live with, but I can see the difference here. Oh, and I gotta tell you what happened. So I was in Tanzania and that one morning, we suddenly saw a male lion on the side of the road and the lion was gorgeous. But what is even more unexpected was uh, the lion walk into a location that is all misty and foggy. The whole scenery was just magical. I was taking photos with my 7200, with the whole environment, with the lion looking back, walking, incoming and everything with the, the fog behind it. So after I, I took a few photos and I started to take some videos as well and then I switched back to photos and something suddenly went wrong. I said, how come the autofocus feels a little bit weird? And then I checked on my photos and I realized that the photos were in JPEG format. And I'm not kidding, it's like the worst nightmare. And the autofocus mode was in AFS, which is not continuous. I thought all the photos from the beginning when the line started to walk in the fog was all JPEG and with single shot focus. That means that the whole time when I was following the lion, all the photos would be out of focus. So I was completely depressed. But fortunately, the JPEG thing just only happened for about 20, 30 photos right after I switched from video back to photos. And I don't even know what really happened. Did I press some button that would change everything into JPEG? I don't know, but maybe some custom function or something that would switch to AFS, single shot, or maybe it's just the humidity of the day. But I think the weather still was pretty good for Nikon. So that is something that I still don't understand. So what can you do now? What is the final verdict of this? So if you can get the 402.8 Nikon the Z, then I would say go with the Nikon Z9. However, this lens is out of stock everywhere. And if you order one, you still have to wait for a few months or who knows, maybe a year or something. And during that time of the waiting, what are you going to do? Are you going to get the O402.8 or if you want to get the 500 PF, for example, or the 404.5, but they are slow lens. So it really comes down to what you want to do with your photography. And for me, what I learned is that a lot of the animals are active during dawn and dusk. And during those times, sunrise and sunsets, the light is also more dramatic. So I can evoke more emotion if I can get good photos in those low light condition. So that's my focus. And also crazy weather, rain, snowing and those. So the combination of the Z9 plus the Fonio 2.8 is perfect for me. But if you're not planning to get this lens, which is quite expensive, is $14,000. If you're not going to get this lens, then I would say get the Sony A7R5. It has like more than 10 megapixels than this one. The frame rate is not as fast as this one, but I think it still have like 10 frames per second or something. So that is very good in my opinion. And also the LCD is better than the A1 where you can do the vertical. So if you enjoy this video, you probably will like the other video about why I am always talking about the 402.8 and make sure to subscribe and like <laughs> the video and if you have any questions or if you want to share your opinion on choosing the camera please leave the comments and I'll talk to you in the next video.